Welcome back guys. Thanks for stopping by. It's going to be the third episode in the completion of the Fimco ATV spreader bracket uh, to mount to a Polaris four-wheeler. So you can see my four-wheeler got a little bit dirty. I had to use it last night. Uh, went and burned off uh, the area that I sprayed a couple of weeks ago. That'll be the next video after this one you guys see, so stay tuned for that. But we're going to go ahead and get started on this. Um, we've got the bracket sitting right over here. I'm going to get that set back in the four-wheeler and get this spreader mounted up and then go through some of the electrical and get all that hooked up and working. So stay tuned. You won't be pissed. All right, I'm gonna give you guys a little closer look at the concept and how it all is gonna work. But you can see down there, it's connected to the ATV. And then I added that two and a half inch uh, standard trailer hitch receiver connection. Comes out in the center. And then each side just comes out to make the 17 and a half inch width that I needed for this spreader bracket. And then it's just gonna have four bolts connected so it's sitting down on the top of the two inch tubing and then four bolts through the two inch tubing so not a super hard project if you've done any welding before uh, I wouldn't say it's out of anybody's league but it should work awesome for this spreader and it'll make it easy to take on and off I don't have to have those brackets connected to my rack all the time so I'm pretty excited about this. It turned out way better than what I could have even hoped for uh, when I first started this project. I wasn't sure the direction I was gonna go with it and I couldn't be happier with the result. So let's get these bolts put in and then we'll start on the wiring. I'm gonna make a couple of modifications to that too. So. So I'm just using standard grade 8, 3 8 hardware for this, flat washers and lock washers. bolts are in and this is how the actual feed opener works so it's got this adjustable stop uh, you can slide for whatever you want to use for your rate it's got the chart right here kind of gives you the rate per acre and then all you do is turn this lever so basically you just turn that lever and it, you can slide your feeder open. So there's nothing that holds this lever open in the open position and I've 
read some reviews that people complained about it closing all the time on them so what I'm probably gonna do is just take like a small oh rubber just strap and probably just strap it around here so it always wants to be open and then when I want to close it I can just pull it closed uh, while I'm driving so it'll be left-handed control I run the throttle with the right hand so it should be perfect so the physical assembly is complete now it's on to the electrical portion so like I said in the last video it comes with this controller and the controller comes with clamps to connect to the battery and then this pigtail here so my sprayer got a 25 gallon county line it's a boomless sprayer and it has just like the standard trailer hitch connection so what i think i'm gonna do is cut this connector off and then I've got an extra trailer hitch connector that I used on one of my boat projects for putting the lights on the front. I think I'm going to solder the trailer hitch connector onto here. So then I can just leave my sprayer harness all plugged in all the time. And I can either plug the sprayer in or I can plug the spreader in uh, using that connector. So I think it should work good. And then this blue and orange line is what actually connects to your motor uh, right here through this connection so i'm gonna get this cut off of here and solder that new one the new pigtail on just to make it easier um, i could use this and connect to the battery but i think in the long run it'll be easier to just solder that new one on and just leave this harness connected to my battery all the time so in these Sportsman 850s, the battery's under the front cover here, and normally I have a storage box up here, up front, so it's basically it's a similar concept. It just has the positive and negative clamps to provide power to my sprayer, so I'm going to do some cutting on that, some modification. It seems like nothing's ever exactly how I want it, and I also have an issue with this. So this harness that's going to run back to this motor is probably 10 or 12 feet longer than what I'm going to need. So I'm probably going to cut this, cut some, cut a fairly substantial chunk out of it and then solder it back together just so I don't have wire hanging all over, looped up all over. But basically this is the only machine I'm going to use it on and if I do change, if I want... If I get a tractor in the future or something, I can always just cut it and add that wire back in. So let's get to it. So here's the pigtail connector I was talking about. It's a standard trailer connector. So basically all I'm gonna do is cut one end off of this and then cut this end off of the spreader controller and solder them together to get my standard connector that I'll be able to use for both my sprayer and my spreader. So let's make it happen. And I'm going to leave a little bit of wire on this connector just so in case I ever do want to go back and use it. I can solder it back together. And then just plug it back into here and put it in my electrical drawer so I don't lose it.
So I just ran over before I got too carried away in connecting these and double checked on that county line spreader and I'm glad I did. But the way that this trailer pin connector connects on the sprayer is like this. So on my pigtail the white is going to be the positive and the red is going to have to be the negative in order to get power from my cord that I have. That would have been a oopsie. I would have had to cut it all apart and redo it. So I'm glad I went over and looked. So Let's get the shrink wrap out and the solder gun fired up. Gonna let those cool off a little bit and then slide my shrink wrap down. We should be good to go for that joint. That's a wrap on that joint. See that? Let's go test this baby out. Flip it off. Unplug our sprayer. Plug the spreader in. Not very easy, one handed. And then we'll just run this. Back to our motor. Obviously, like I said, I'm going to trim this. And Route it nicely. But I just want to test it all and make sure it's going to work first. I just got to plug this in back here, like so. And now we should be able to come up to our controller here, flip it to the on. And we got nothing.
Hmm. Oh. Forgot. We gotta turn on our spray or our sprayer. There we got power. We get our control. We'll slow it right down to slow. She's spinning. It looks way slower on the camera because of the frame rate, but it's spinning pretty fast right there, even on low. Let's see what it looks like at full speed. She's putting off some breeze. And we can just flip it off there or here. That'll actually be handier for me because I plan on mounting this. I'm probably going to zip tie it um, back there to that rail. So then I can just set my rate and I can turn it on and off up here. So that'll actually work out really slick. But that is it, guys. The Fimco spreader. Took a little bit of work, but from what I've read, it's pretty much the best spreader. It's definitely heavy duty, uh, the best ATV spreader you can get. Um, to modify it for a Polaris, I wouldn't say that it's a beginner's job, but it's definitely doable. And all the extra stuff I did, obviously, you guys don't have to do that. But I'm excited to use it. Uh, it should work awesome um, for spreading lime, fertilizers broadcasting seed, doing all that stuff. So it won't be long and we'll be out there and working in the food plots. So stay tuned to the channel. Thanks again for subscribing. If you haven't already, please do. And we'll see you on the next one.